Hello, friends, dear classmates. Um, I'm here at Strung Out Repair. Repair with my dear friend Andy Jellison. We call him Andrew. Yes. Oh, what do you prefer, Andrew? Andrew. Yeah. Andrew. It's my and birth name. It's your birth name. Okay, and uh, he was kind enough to work on. You've worked on several guitars for me lately, but this one, I'm very excited about. Tell us what we got going here, my friend. Well, we swapped out that bridge because this is that that awful bale tail piece that right. wraps the strings underneath, not over the top. What is this? 52? 52, I think. First year of the Les Paul? Yeah. The first year of the Gold Top. Um, no serial number? No serial number. So these have intrinsic problems by their design that make it very difficult historically for anybody to play them. Oh, it's right? ridiculous, yeah. See, the original bridge, which this is not the original bridge. Here's the original bridge. Yeah. We'll show you. The original bridge uh, attaches to those existing. Let's bring it over there so we can show, show them. Yeah, that's how we do it. So this is the original shit here. The bale is original. And it originally had this crazy contraption where the strings from the factory go underneath yeah so they'd come through they'd, yeah they'd come here i think i might even have it backwards okay yes no that was right and then so obviously the main yeah, reason so it, they come through here yeah and come out of the and people hate them because you can't palm mute no and it's terribly yeah so they come out of here and wrap of underneath tune. Yeah, this right. intonation is impossible. It's a bad, bad design. Great guitar. You can get your two E strings, maybe. You can get your two E strings, right. <laughs> Everything else in between would be awful. Yeah. So the the fine folks at Music City Bridge designed this piece, which attaches to the original metal of the original bridge. And now you've got a guitar that's adjustable intonation, and it's got just enough clearance and very little angle so that it goes over and you can palm mute and do all the stuff you normally like to do. Look how it, like, very little clearance there, right? And the pickups are really low in result. So this is a preset compensation piece, yeah? Yep. And uh, so you did a lot of work to this guitar. What did you do, Andy? Let's see. Well, we Andrew. had to start with the bridge to get that to yeah. work. I had, they had, the plating had gotten a little thick in those mm -hmm. holes, so I had to open them up so that these screws would spin, or the nuts, yeah, the collars and such. Yeah. I ended up shimming this pickup up because they're, they mount them to the, the body, and they're just flush to the bottom of the router. Right. So I brought it, put some shims under there. Okay. Angled shim, actually, because it's a 30, 3 30 seconds on this side and <clears throat> 16th on that side, so it, it's actually cocked a little bit, but mm -hmm. you would never know it looking at it. This one I just left like it was, and there were some issues with the wiring, the original wiring, remember? Yeah, so the original wiring, this is very interesting about these. So you got, well, we can just show them. Yeah. Check it. So magnetically, they're both uh, north, okay? Now, when you put it in the middle, you would get that out of phase, funkadoo okay. sound you don't want right. to hear, right? Yeah. But the reason, you get the, the, the reason you get Peter the weird Green phase fan. sound has yeah. nothing to do with the magnetic polarity. Okay. It's about the way they're wound and so electronically we'll call it this one was opposite of this one and the way i determine that yeah well it's ancient chinese secret no i'm just kidding <laughs> um you got some ancient chinese secrets Let's see. you get you get you a little a meter like this okay and I, I i won't demonstrate but essentially you hook it up to your a cable to your your instrument mm -hmm. take the strings off it'll be easier um and then once you got that hooked up, take a screwdriver, tap it on the coil, and the needle is going to either fluctuate left or right. And you want them both to fluctuate the same direction. Okay. And what I didn't have was this one was going that way to the right, this one was going to the left. Okay. So now they're both going the same direction. Can't yeah. remember which way they're going now. So it was audio-wise, it was out of phase, but they were actually in phase, the wiring, yeah, originally. Yeah, right? magnetically they were Magnetic fine, yeah, but okay. they, they did that. So I was talking to Phil Jones, another right. guy who's been in this forever, about it, and he said they would sometimes grab 
two different batches, they didn't even know it. And so they wouldn't know one was wound the other direction than the opposite okay. one. So to fix this, what I did, I didn't touch anything in here. Right. But there's the two coil wires are right underneath that pickup on the bottom side. All I had to do was swap them. Right. Because the ground wire is actually kind of exposed because right. there's a little clip underneath there. Right. And then the other one just took the tape off, desoldered it, soldered it back yes. the opposite, and boom, there you go. Let's move this way. Lovely fret job you just did. What did you, what kind of wire did you use? Actually, I don't, I used the 147 Stu Mac this time. 147? Okay. Yeah. Did you have to plane the board a bit? I had to plane quite a bit of the board. Okay. And since it has so little neck angle, we tried to take more of a material off here than we did up here, but it also has some kick up, so I was kind of hoping that between taking this off, I wouldn't have to take much off at this end. And it, it turned out that's exactly how it worked. Did you have to pull the inlays? I had to pull all the inlays and then put them back in again. Tell, tell the folks about how important pulling the inlays is. Well, it, it's only important if you want to keep the thickness of those inlays right. and they're poroid, so right. they cut away pretty quick. And if you ruin them, where are you going to get one? Right. And where are you going to find material that looks like that? Exactly. So a lot of bad repair guys will We'll start mowing down these boards with the inlay still in. And then you got no inlay left. And then you, and it'll actually go right through because they're very thin. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we're talking maybe, they might be 30 thousandths okay. tops. 30 well, so at the factory, they just put them in and then they dress the whole board, right? Right. So they may have started out 50 thousandths tall or maybe even 60. Right. And they, they grind the heck right. out of that board, put them in. What about this whole <clears> thing, <throat> the, the, the nibs, when you see, um, I'm trying to get a better focus. How does that all work with these old Gibsons? There we go. How does that? Well, Gibson would always fret their instruments, so they didn't. They they built the whole fingerboard out. They would put the inlays in. They put the the frets in. Then they would bind it, and then they would put the nib, create the nibs, mm -hmm. as we so call them. So the little piece of binding. Okay. Here's one that I'm working on. Getting the nibs put back. Um, here's one with the nib kind of. More or less shape. Okay. And this is one that focus is shit. There you go. There we go. Okay. So you can see that's just a glob. That's kind of a glob, but it's okay. closing in on what it needs to be. Right. Um, so you'll build up that material. Yeah. Which is just melted binding, melted essentially. Melted binding, and then you got something to sand or something to file. Yeah. yeah. So I use a little file and, and reshape them, and then Amazing. then bevel them just like you would at the, the end of the fret. Amazing. But, okay. Um, like in the case of this one, it was a 72 or something like that, 73, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's got super thick binding. So I'm not a big fan of that. I would have rather put them over the binding because you get more fret okay. surface to play with and you could widen out your string spacing a little bit. Right. Um, but in the case of that one, because it's only got like 30 thousandths, if it's not only 15 at the top because it, it's got an ellipse to it because of the way they carve it. And that's why it feels so nice. Yeah, it feels so nice. Did you have to do a new nut on this thing? I did. I had to make a new nut. Okay. I don't know why my camera is not focusing, but you get the idea. So, can you help me here? Let's see. All right. So, um, you started with a blank. Yeah. And uh, let's see. What do you use for that? There's one, of, there's one of my ugly blanks. Okay. And then you just shape it back in. There's a nice little bone. Yeah, that's actually old Gibson. Uh, is it old Gibson bone came from the, the Gibson factory? Yeah. Did Mich you have, Michigan, though. Okay. Did you have to fuck with the tuners too? No, I had to do much with the tuners yeah. on that one. Look at these cool old tall knobs. I always thought that was great on the early '50s Pauls. Did have to plug and redrill these two holes back here on the tailpiece. They were stripped oh, out. They're all so stripped I, out. I don't yeah. know why. You know, somebody had taken them off a couple times. Okay. Not a big deal. You never even know I did it. And you said there was a little bit of binding issue that you were going to fix, but I said, don't worry about it. Yeah, right here where you see it's kind of loose. Yeah. Um, you think that's going to be a problem? I, I think you'll be fine, unless you get all hot and sweaty and stupid. Yeah, and take it to festival problem. gigs. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Let's look at the back. Let's see what we got going back here. I cleaned it up a little bit. Did you? Not much, but just enough. Man, why is the camera looking so shitty? Can you fix it? Yeah, sorry there guys. Goes. There it goes. There we go. Okay, um, not a bad, uh, too, not too much belt buckle rash back there. A little bit here. Uh, the back of the neck That's is, is pretty clean, which is important to me. I hate when you can feel the things in the back of the neck. 
I can feel a little that. bit of, of stuff in it, but it's not bad. It's pretty smooth, and there's a nice wear on it. Yeah, right, right there. nice wear. Good looking tuners. Double line, single ring, is that what they are? Or single, single line? No no name. This no is name. Too early for it. Too early that. for, for uh... Sorry, guys, I'm not winning any awards for my camera and work today. But yeah, single single line, no name. Yeah. No That's name. rare. Yeah. Well, that's how you know they're super early. That's how you know, yeah. And 52 Les Pauls don't have a serial number, mostly, right? Nope. And they do have bizarre looking cases. Look at this, kind of a weird looking, it's different than like a burst case, right? Yeah, I think it's got a, a flatter flat. top. Doesn't yeah. have the, I think it, flatter top. I think it has more, do they right. have more of a radius? The, I like think a they 58 did, yeah. 58 58 have more like a bubble top, right? Yeah, so I thought for the car yeah. and what have you. Yeah. Yeah, you can see where the bridge was hitting. Right. Man, so what was the hardest part of this whole job on, on this one? Well, what, 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 what dealing with the was, inlays. The inlays, yeah. Inlays was the, it's yeah. the tough part. Yeah. One, getting them out, and two, putting them back in. Right. Right. What's the secret to getting them out, man? Just pull them out. They come out pretty easy. Do they? Um, you just, you got to kind of cross your fingers and pray a little bit. Could you, they probably break a lot, yeah. They can break. Yeah. But in the case of these, usually most of these, the filler, if you look at an old 58, 59, mm -hmm. 335, anything, any from that period that's got yeah. this type of inlay in it, the filler that they use almost looks like pore filler. Mm -hmm. It's really porous and, and doesn't look like it should be in there. Right. Um, so it, that that's kind of a good thing, which allows you to get something underneath. Cool. The, the corner of the inlay and then right. just, i just keep working my way underneath and eventually just look. yep <clears throat> and when they put them in they just they don't glue them in oh yeah because it's celluloid right they just use a uh, solvent so mek or acetone they may have had a slurry of a mixture of acetone uh -huh. and in the in the plastic itself right and then they plop them in there um and that and then they just adhere to the rosewood right by themselves and that's how i put them back in the same way this guitar is having a moment right now. For 70 years, it's never been in tune. And now, 70 years into its life, it's finally in tune. Well, we're going to see, aren't we? Oh, dude. Or here, rather. The intonation. <laughs> like, look at that. All right, Andrew, thank you for doing this. And thanks for teaching us about how to repair an old gold top, right? Um, I can tell you about it all day long. Our part doing it. <laughs> right. No kidding, man. No kidding. Thank you, dude. It just takes time. Right. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, we're not. Peace Last out, step. man. Um, Andrew's putting a little uh, nut sauce in there, right? Uh, My own special, yeah, special recipe. Concoction, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we just set the intonation, and it is dead on. Yeah, That's it's a good Man, uh, let's show. Maybe you can hold the old camera real quick, and I'll, and I'll do the old. Uh, try not to show this. Oh, you don't. You don't, uh, want, to, you don't want to show your head there. Yeah, my carved up head. Let's see. Okay. Oh my God! Look at this, bro. Who would ever think that a '52 Les Paul could ever be this in tune? Check this out. Here's your high E. Here's your B. Look at that. The G. Here's your D. That's just a little sharp. Here's the A. Yes. Here's the E. Low E. Listen. What? See the joy on the children's faces. Do you see it? Listen, to Andy. Only on this child that's oh, right in front of me yeah, right yeah. now. I never thought. Fifty-year-old something child here. This guitar would ever turn out like this. It's amazing, I, dude. I appreciate it so much. Oh, you bet. It's great. Okay, so, dude, you when you go to adjust the intonation, all you got to do is turn these right with yep. the with the special. What is it? A five sixteen? Three yeah. eighths. Five sixteenths. So. Really, all you're doing, if you buy a 52 Les Paul, you can use all the original shit. You just got to change this piece, which is available from Music City Bridge. I don't even know the name of it. Is there a name of that piece? 
What do they call it? Do you know? I don't. I've done um, my head. But that was one of the first products that, that Joe made. Uh, when we did our stud finder thing, we added it to this already was there, you know. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. This is one of the first things he did. So there's a lot of old 70s conversions of these that you've seen where people tried everything yeah. to make them go. Uh, I've seen crazy shit. Like, um, I was just seeing a video of a guy the other night playing one. He had like, it looked like, uh, it looked like he used one of those bales from like a, uh, Oh, God. Barney Kessel like or something? Barney Kessel, and he, he had it attached to some kind of crazy bridge that must have got drilled into the guitar. Uh, but the thing about this one is there's no drilling. Nope, you just could put right this there. guitar back exactly like it was original, because this guitar was 100% original when I bought it, but also unplayable. Extremely. Yeah, but man, dude, so you can put it all back to original if you want, but at this point it's a totally, perfectly intonated professional instrument with with super low action show them how low the action is see if i can get you there you go shit focus right yeah. and then we also want to put in a plug for a local restaurant that we go to we live very close to what is it andrew it's it's the loveless cafe the loveless cafe right on highway uh, 100 it's a very popular old school nashville staple right yep and the best biscuits in town so if you're ever in nashville you want to get some good biscuits. That's where you go. Loveless, Loveless Cafe. Cafe. Thank you. Awesome. I don't care if it's a it's a solid body or it's a hollow body 225 or uh, even like a, a Les Paul Special, any guitar that's equipped with two P90s, you'll find that the neck pickup is always louder than the bridge pickup. Why is that? No matter how you adjust it, it's, only, it's like, you'll see, that's a pretty even balanced adjustment right there. But... Listen to how much louder. But that's crazy, great middle sound though. A lot of guys will end up adjusting the neck pickup on their P90 guitar so low just to get it. The volume, you right. know, yep. and that goes for dog ears, you know, you'll see any that of them. Yeah. Yeah, any of them. 